Sheffield is known to be in the top 10 most scariest places in Britain. We're going to show you three of them now. When this building was first opened in the year 1900, it was a purpose-built combined police and fire station. Abandoned in 1965, the now National Emergency Services Museum has been described as the most haunted building in South Yorkshire, where there are said to be at least six resident spirits and many more that come and go and interact with visitors. It is said that around the museum there is a black fog that follows you around and brings with it a distinct smell. This is the cell where a notorious ghost resides. He is known as Cain, but this is believed to not be his name. During his lifetime, it is thought that he committed multiple murders. There is a spirit, a ghost with a strong character. He will keep Cain in check along the corridors and will not let him wander around. On the top floor, there are reports of the ghost of a child who, while alive, was arrested for pickpocketing. It's now said that he searches the pockets of visitors' jeans looking for sweets. Nigel, you work at the museum and we were wondering if you could tell us any stories you've heard about the ghosts here. Well, there's stories about a little girl on top floor. I mean, when the school groups come, we often, well, I've, I've been there and I've actually seen when they go in separate groups, the teacher always camps the group before they come back downstairs. And then she camps one more than she's That's supposed to have, then she has a recap and camps the proper. Because the little girl, you know, she's camped to the next head. It just there, is it? You know. The little girl, supposedly on the top floor, uh, is happy because apparently her mother's here but also the nasty man's here as well. Um, supposedly pushed it down the stairs, she broke her neck. Have you got a name for this ghost? We have, because somebody's come up with a name. And we'll wait and see if anybody else comes up with the same name, and then we'll be able to prove it. Thank you, Nigel, for all of your help. No problem. One of the most notorious buildings for hauntings in Sheffield is Carbrook Hall, the city's oldest pub. Carbrook Hall was first home to the Blunt family in 1176 before belonging to the Bright family from 1462. Phil, who once lived and worked here, claims the main ghost appears at the top of the stairs. The ghost is supposedly Colonel John Bright, who fought in the Civil War. He even planned military manoeuvres with Oliver Cromwell here. The pub's most troublesome ghost was supposedly banished into a war behind the bar, but still manages to cause mischief. Phil claims bottles would often fly off his shoulder when serving customer, leaving them terrified. The pub is currently closed and was recently damaged in an arson attack. The future of Carbrook Hall and its supposed spirits remains unclear. The Queen's Head is said to be one of the oldest buildings in Sheffield. The actual building is thought to be dated back to 1475, although the written records date to 1582. The Queen's Head is most likely named after Mary Queen of Scots, who was imprisoned in Sheffield at 1570 to 1584. One of the most notorious spirits at Old Queen's Head is a spirit that is said to haunt the female uh, toilets of the pub. The female guests are frequently reported uh, seeing an unseen entity trying to unlock the toilets of in used cubicles. The landlord noticed the reoccurring pint in his bar. His initial response was to blame the bar staff, but he came to the conclusion that it wasn't them. He tried the pint and realised it wasn't a drink he served in the bar. He then set up CC TV cameras overnight, but the pint never appeared again. In around 1569, Mary Queen of Scots was transported through the tunnels of Sheffield to escape the Protestants. According to the mediums of the Coins for Paranormal Research Society, there were a final fleet of troops in this parade that were held in the cellar of this very pub. According to these mediums, there was plenty of bloodshed in these cellars, which may have resulted in the spirit still being in the pub. Far too many for us to include in this short documentary. And while some people firmly believe that there is truth in the tales, there are and always will be skeptics. But what do you think? Is it all fabrication, fiction, and make believe? Or is it possible that there are spirits here in the Steel City?